Hello, my Flat Earth family. So today I'm going to talk about, there's a big clue right in front of you, but I want you to, there, I'm trying to get that shadowing, uh, I'm in the glare off of it. I want to tell you about this. Now see, it's in a frame. And this is what I have hanging in, of all places, my bathroom. Because when I stand there every morning, brushing my teeth, I look at this poster in, my, uh, in the frame. So let me read it to you. Attitude by Charles Swindoll. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company, a church, a home. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes. Now, the most important thing about that is we have a, a choice. And 90% of any situation is how we react. All those um, sayings that it takes two, baby, you know, um, and it takes two to tango and it takes two to fight and all of that. So when you're going out doing activism, you have choices no matter who you mate and no matter what they say to you, you have a choice of how to react to them. So I started out this, I'm going to go through some of my notes that I had made yesterday. Uh, and I was going to hold this off until later. But um, this session is going to address how we meet the public, how we are seen and how we deliver information to those we don't know how they will receive it. Flat Earth is a serious subject, and those who have been programmed and are indoctrinated will receive it with mockery. Those who are intelligent will look at the information you present them with and see that there are some pictures they recognize and look closer. Because the banners, if you look at the banners, they have some pictures that they could recognize. So if they're educated, they'll see the pictures and and that's what I'm saying by that. So it's the banner and having some sort of... Uh, a brochure to hand out that you can point to pictures on the brochure or um, leaflet, as they're called over in the UK. Um, that's important. A picture says a thousand words. I don't know that you understand how important that, that is. Um, okay. Um, when I am out amongst the youth... They are not as experienced to recognize this as a serious subject. However, when you relate it to their life, then they start to think. So these college kids are still very young, and they don't have life experience. Uh, one kid said, oh, you're calling me dumb. I said, no. I said, you don't have the experience. You're young and don't have the experiences. Once you start experiencing things in life and get really um, trampled on by the government, then you'll understand these things. And that's what I was really saying without really saying the whole thing. Okay. Um, it has come to my attention that we are intolerant of the difference between people within our flat earth community. 
Does this mean that you only want to uh, only want people like you in the flat earth community? No. Are we trying to keep flat earth to ourselves? No. Is this some sort of status symbol to be kept behind closed doors? No. That isn't happening. If the knowledge of flat earth is to do any good, then it must be available to the whole entire population. And it is our job to tell them about it. If you are not on board with outreach, then I must question your motives. There are flat earthers making comments about these differences between us, and we need to learn how to navigate these interactions. It doesn't matter what someone says to you, but it does matter how you react. And there you go. How you react. That's important. You know, um, I was talking to my daughter. She was home this weekend. She's very wise for her years. And I said, did you happen to notice what that person said the other day? She said, yeah, I did. And, and uh, I just try to laugh those things away because of the moment. But then you have to come back and think about them. And I'm there, yeah, isn't that something? So, um, yeah, we can laugh things off, but you have to really think about what they said. And then maybe at a later time, question them if you're in a group. You don't want to single somebody out and embarrass them in front of a group, unless they are intentionally trying to embarrass you. But even then, come on. So, um, okay. Uh, there are flat earthers making comments about these differences. So I'm suggesting that we need every flat earther, that we have to reach every group of people on this earth. We need every connection available. You were chosen for your connections, and you are going to reach a people you were designed to reach. If you want to say that is a cult, then you will be showing your lack of vision in the plan to spread truth to all nations of people. I remember the old story about, for want of a nail, the war was lost. Do you remember that? You ever hear that? For want of a nail, the war was lost? How does that happen? You see, the nail was on the shoe of the horse that carried the general into battle. Something as small as a nail can make a big difference. And you are that nail. Each one of us is one nail. So if you are not present and reaching the people that you're supposed to reach, then there's going to be a huge, huge gap. So society has dictated that it is crazy to talk to yourself, but many lawyers practice their summaries out loud and uh, in a room by themselves. Okay. In fact, this was part of my uh, sales training. I often practice my presentation alone in front of a mirror, as I was trained to do many years ago, by an excellent company who has the best sales training. They even suggest that you use a mirror when making telephone calls because your voice changes with facial expression. And that is so true. You can tell, you know, you talk to somebody on the phone, you say, oh, are you, are you all right? You sound sad. So <laughs> having a good facial expression you know, that's very important. You know, try to smile, but not too much smiling that it looks like you're joking about flat earth. So try to have a serious but pleasant look on your face. Okay, I think we need to get back the wisdom of the ages found in our older, more experienced people. What do you value? Are you sucked into the modern program indoctrination of society, which puts us at a disadvantage? All these changes in society have been done to make us more vulnerable to their programming. See, their programming is not the only thing. It's, it's everything that they've done. It's trying to marginalize us. Uh, there was a time, well, let me continue with my notes. Uh, the young are not experienced in these matters, but the older people in this flat earth movement are experienced in uh, in matters of social change. So uh, let's try and uh, value everyone in the movement, everyone who is in our flat earth community. Okay, the three things. Oh, well, let me just say one more thing about that. Did everyone uh, remember watching the Waltons? 
John Boy Walton. The whole family lived in that house. The, the parents were in a little room downstairs. They took care of them. They were all part of the family. And even long after, um, like the father, the grandfather had died and then the grandmother had a stroke, so she couldn't talk, but she was making sausage. And I remember uh, John Boy saying, oh, boy, that is really hot. And the mother thought, aha, I won this battle. But then John Boy says, that's the best sausage I ever had. So <laughs> you can still learn things. I still learn things from my 91-year-old mother. I mean, it's, it's very important. So the three things I worship are the way, the truth, and the life. Um, this video today that I'm making is on the way. We all have choices. So 99% is how we react to personal attacks. Oh, and here it says 90%, but I, 99. Um, we can choose to gain an advantage by taking the position of victimhood. Now, this is very interesting. This is what we were trained and, and indoctrinated to do, is take the position of victimhood. But do you really want to do that? It is an emotional response and can be easily... Uh, be used to gain support, but through pity. Do you really want pity? It is effective, but only in the short term. So let's think a little long term. In the short term, oh, poor person. Oh, yeah, you were picked on. Okay. So are you going to be looked up to then in the future as a leader? No, you're not. People won't won't forget that. You're the victim and you need to be pitied. So figure out how to take um, take negative responses, negative uh, attacks on your person and change it and turn it around and, and take control of that. Someone just threw you the ball. Now you got the ball in your hands. What are you going to do with it? You're going to say, ouch, it hurt my hands. Or are you going to say, okay. And figure out a way to throw the back at them. But if you do it in a gentle manner, you will be seen as having total control. And that is what is really looked at. Someone who can control themselves in a, in a very stressful situation. So, um, in the short term, victimhood doesn't exude confidence in your abilities and no one, no one will want to hear a victim who, what a victim has to say unless they have overcome their adversity. We want to hear and learn from overcomers, from winners. So practice how you can turn an insult into a victory. I was recently insulted and decided to turn this around as a teaching op opportunity for activists. Believe me, there is no shortage of insults shortage of insults out in the public, especially with a topic like flat earth. So how can you turn around an unpleasant situation? Take the position of victor instead of victim. What would truth and life do? Now, this is how I'm kind of balancing these three things, truth, life, and way. Okay, the way is, is love, but there's within love, there are ways to um, do things that will put you in the position of victor. Okay. I was recently sold da, 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 opportunity that. Believe me, there's no shortage of insults like flat earth. Okay. So how can you turn around an unpleasant situation? Take the position of victor instead of victim. What would truth and life do? Here it is. Simple. This simply means to take truth and just restate the perceived insult and clarify the intent. And that is such an easy thing to do, isn't it? So when somebody insults you, just repeat the insult back to them and as though it was a question. Like, did you really say that? What? Like, oh, so I'm crazy? Really? So it's not crazy to think that we're standing on a spinning ball? I mean, isn't that easy? That is easy. Everybody can do that, right? Oh, oh, you think I'm nuts? <laughs> so just restate the insult. 
Okay. Um, give the person an opportunity to clarify their position. So when somebody calls you crazy, by doing this, you may see um, it as unprofitable and restate it or apologize immediately. Okay. So they may see it as the insult that it really was. And when they hear it come back to them, they will see, oh, gee, I guess that wasn't so nice. So then you can continue on from that. But if you take the position of victim and turn around and walk away, what have you gained? You haven't gained anything, have you? So there are times, um, this woman, uh, this young girl was attacking me up at, um, Reading area, and I had to call in the um, the professor or the teacher or the security man, and I had I had to say, please take care of her. You know, I did put up my arm in defense because she was shaking her fist at me, and so I um, just put up my arm and I said, please come get her, and they did. So there's some things that you have to take a proactive position on. Uh, there's other ways I could have done that. You can call the police. You are protected by freedom of speech. So I would, if there's security, if you are on uh, school grounds, uh, there should be security right there. And so you should avail uh, yourself of them. Use that, okay? Um, but see, if you walk away, then you've just killed that conversation. I've had many people come around uh, to at least having a civil conversation after they've insulted me. Ah, and there's another guy um, on YouTube. It's Isaiah 4022. And he told me that after um, they laughed at me, we were on the boardwalk down in uh, Ocean City. And he said, Marilyn, I can't tell you how many people, they come walking away from you. They're laughing and laughing and saying all this stuff. And I hit them again with other stuff, with information. Now, I am a woman, so you have to know that that's a factor. But then when they go on to Mark, and he's a very tall, uh, you know, f physically fit man. So he's standing there and he looks down at them and he says, oh, really? So what about this? And what about that? You know, so he says he's gotten quite a few. It, sometimes people just need a minute or two to think. You know, they're, they're shocked. Like flat earth is a shocking thing. And it just, they can't process it. Like I said in another video that all those electrical synapses are firing all at one time and they don't know what to do with it. They can't, and you have to think of it as a physical thing like that. When electricity, it's, it's like a wire that's cut and it's just bouncing all over the road. That's what happens in their brains. And you have to understand that didn't we first reject it? When we heard flat earth, we said, oh, this is ridiculous. I'm not even going to go there. But then your brain is, is working on it. Even when you're not thinking you're thinking of it, you are thinking of it. Okay, so uh, give people a time. Say, hey, well, think about this for a minute. And then, you know what? I often have a large group. So if somebody's like stuck on something, I'll say, hey, wait a minute. And then I, you'll see me have the cards and I look around for other people and I say, wait a minute. And I go hand out more cards. And ask, even if I know they have a card, oh, did you get a card? Did you get a card? And it gives that person time to think. Time to formulate their questions. They can't even formulate a good question. And if they're like going off on some tangent, I say, I say, well, hey, look at the banners. Pick out a picture on the banner that we can discuss. And if you keep their discussion just to what you have at hand, then you have a way of getting information to them. It's not a matter of, of brainwashing them. We know that. It's a matter of getting them to even consider new information. So I often say to them too, a scientist cannot reject new information until they have um, evaluated it. And if you're not even going to look at this, then you are not logical. You are not a scientific mind. And that gets them to give them a challenge, you know. So, um, what else? Well, you know, I can turn this around because I, um, oh, wait a minute. Do I have that thing on here? I don't know if I can turn this around. 
and I don't want to turn around until I know what I can I don't want to lose the, the connection. Okay, so I don't even know if I'm getting you here right now. All right. But you want to see me because look, I just I just did my hair. Woohoo! I'm going to uh, Dave Gessner's birthday party. FlatEarth101.com. It's his birthday today, and he's having a party at 3 o'clock, so... I'm going to go up to his birthday party. So that's why I'm all dressed up. Okay, so let me finish this. There's only a page left. So I hope I'm getting this. Ah, yes, I see a little reflection there. Okay. So, um, all right. So uh, taking the position of truth and life will edify and solidify your position of equality. So uh, truth and life, uh, truth is like trying to get at what they're really trying to say, okay? Um, oh, so when you take the position of victim, you automatically put the other person delivering the insult or the sarcastic remark or the attack in a position of aggressor or attacker. So you don't want to do that because then you end up having an angry debate, a uh, fight, a... Uh, and you're opening yourself up for um, unpleasantness. So don't do that. Um, all right. This is divisive and seeks to gain an advantage over others. Flat Earth is not a war of men, but of principalities. Flat Earth is not personal. So don't say, um, don't allow them to say that you are crazy. Oh, so you mean... This idea is crazy. Always take it away from you. You're just the messenger. Take it away from you and talk to the um, talk to the banner or the brochure. An easy way is body language. Change your physical position. Do not be face to face with that person, toe to toe. Come over and stand next to them and point to the banner. So that redirects their focus to the banner. Okay, so it's not you and them, it's you're both talking about what's on the banner. Do you see that? Your physical position, your body language can change the whole, the whole discussion. It really can, the whole thing. Um, and see, it, it will look as though you're going on their side by your standing next to them. So... Um, it, there's a lot you can do. Uh, and this is not a manipulation. You're honest and true. So you just want them to be um, focused on the right thing. Don't let them focus on you. Focus on the information that you're telling them. Okay. So, um, okay. Any person who makes flat earth personal, personal fight habitually will not have good long-term results, right? Nobody wants to be in the company of someone who takes a position of victim on a regular basis. I don't like victims. I don't have them as friends. I I don't like people who complain all the time. It's like, oh, it's so draining. It's so, please. I mean, really. And if anybody has anything to complain about, it's me. But, don't, I mean, couldn't we all say that, really? But I realized that if I'm really going to change something, I've got to be proactive. And this is going, this is very proactive. I, I was so excited when I realized all this about flat earth. It's like, hey, this could really do something. This could prevent other families from uh, getting torn apart by the lies in our government. So this is why I'm really motivated by this. Okay, so... Um, first restate what was said, then pause and allow for reclarification. Okay. Um, that's one thing you learn in, uh, in sales is when you've got them there with the paper in front of them and the pen and all they have to do is sign, you keep your mouth shut. Do not interrupt them from signing that paper. 
That's all they have to do is sign the paper. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we could eliminate sarcasm altogether, but some people wouldn't know how to speak to anyone. <laughs> Don't you know people like that who are just totally sarcastic and, and they wouldn't know what to say if they weren't? It's like they're inhibited. They, they are uncomfortable trying to talk to people. Sarcasm is a way of getting through an uncomfortable situation. So people who habitually use sarcasm are uncomfortable speaking to other people. So you're revealing your insecurities by using sarcasm habitually. In the world of men, this may mean a challenge such as an insult or such as in rutting season season. Okay. Men are a little different than women. Okay. But I have only an outside view of that. So I don't really know. Um, I do think it's very important for you to, to uh, self analyze your actions on a regular basis and know uh, why you do things. If you're an emotional reactionary, then you won't be able to be effective in your activism. Activism requires you having command of yourself and your partner in discourse, which is the person that you're speaking with. So you have to be able to know yourself and then know the person you're talking to and, and react accordingly and give a place for their insults or give a place for their information or questions that are coming at you. You are fielding their, their, um, their volley. Okay. So that's a tennis term. So, um, uh, if you think of this like ping pong match and you allow a back and forth, then that is a debate. However, what you want to deliver is three serves without a return. Isn't that something you want to deliver three serves at, that they can't fight back. They can't return them to you. Then you've got your three things, three facts that you've given them that they didn't know before. And then you can direct them to flatearth101.com forward slash begin. And that will take them to uh, the 200 proofs and then the time lapse of the sun and uh, refraction, which shows you why you think the sun sets. In order to have a back and forth and be effective, you must know that you are who you are speaking with. So if it's a long-term discussion here, a long-term, I mean more than a minute, when you're out there doing activism and you have a group of people, do not spend more than one minute or one question with one person. Say, okay, let me take this other question and then I'll come back to you. And I've often done that and you can see it, okay? Try not to spend too much time, especially with, um, if someone is like fumbling over their question, say, okay, wait a second, let me, I'll come right back to you. And that gives them 30 seconds to gather their thoughts, okay? Um, all right, well, uh, so you can ask their level of education. I like knowing if there's a, a, a doctorate in physics, I know I like knowing if they are a science school teacher. I like knowing um, if they're an engineer because then I can go right to the hard questions. See, just an average, um, uh, I don't know, just an average waitress or whatever, they aren't going to have these really hard, tough questions. It's just not in their daily walk. But when you have someone in a profession, then you need to know and then you can redirect their questions. And sometimes you can figure out who they are by the question they are asking you. And a lot of people are afraid of getting questions like um, something really difficult. What I did, I got a really good question from a student at Delaware um, County Community College. And it was a long question. So when I got up to the, to the banners, I like, where did he start with that question? So I asked him, I said, now, what was the beginning of that question? And he said something and then gravity and I'm there. Okay. So I, re I knew right away to tell him something about gravity that he didn't know. So I don't have to really answer their question exactly because you know, their questions are based on a fallacy. It's something that's made up. The heliocentric model is made up. 
So you cannot answer that honestly. Um, so just n tell them what you do know and then allow them to formulate that in their own mind, how that can work. You remember, you're talking about two different languages here. You have to be able to translate from one to the other. And some of the kids also said to me, well, you keep going back to there's no curvature, going back to, well, sometimes that's all you can do. Because what they're thinking is so way out there, it's in outer space. And we know there is none. So try to bring them back down to earth. And that's why I say about the curvature. Okay. So in order to have a blah, 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 blah. Okay, I did that. The proper way to ask a question. Do you have an, here, this is good. The proper way to ask a question. Do you have an open mind or... Do you think you have an open mind? And Harry asks that correctly. Good, good job, Harry. Because um, if they think they have an open mind, that is a proper way to ask that question. Just asking them if they have an open mind will give them a different res um, will give a different result as it is positioning them as a judge over what you are telling them. Did you, do you realize that? Do you have an open mind? That's all right, automatically saying to them, they can reject whatever you're saying. Okay. But if you say, do you think you have an open mind? So that um, makes them place the information in a unique position that they will have to challenge themselves. Do you see that? Um, if you have a question on that, oh, I don't know, let me hear, finish this. Do you have an open mind tells me that I can tell, that I can call what I'm about to hear as BS. The information is being judged, okay? However, when I hear, do I think I have an open mind, then I am challenging myself to take this information and really analyze it, or otherwise I am condemned for having a closed mind. But I'm condemning myself. Okay, do you see that? Do you see the difference? How or the way you ask a question can give you an entirely different result. Do I always do this correctly? No way. But I am aware and trying to do it the best way I can to get a different result. We want to reach people and have them analyze the information we are giving them. Think about the way. If you need motivation to do this, then do it because love is also the way. <laughs> Am I saying that funny enough for you to understand? Okay. Okay. Um, when we reach more people, then we will also benefit our own position. Destroying the lies, all boats will rise. Zane, there's one for you. Destroying the lies, all boats will rise. Think that, figure that one out. I hope you comment and tell me what part of this was helpful. Okay, I want to use these live streams as a means of putting together a curriculum of sorts and you can participate by letting me know your thoughts. So, um, I'm so happy I did this. I wanted to do it this morning and... Um, I sat down, I said, oh, I've got a little time before I go. So I'm going to do that. And I had written down these notes yesterday. And all I needed was my little, my trusty little um, frame that I keep on the bathroom wall. So um, think about it. You know, when you go out in, um, and, and make presentations, don't worry. You're going to learn these things. But... You can practice in front of a mirror. Practice in front of a mirror so you can see your reaction, your facial expression when you're speaking. Something else I do is I do not speak highbrow when I'm out. I don't want people to think I'm a snob. And if you talk just a little bit slangy, then you're not like insulting them or intimidating them. Listen to this. I have often gotten that I am intimidating. 
Uh, I used to always go up to people and look them straight in the eye and shake their hand. And I've worked with my hands. I was um, in landscaping. I uh, dug ditches for many years. I uh, trained horses. I've always been very physical. So um, I had a very firm handshake. I wasn't trying. It just was there. Uh, why shake somebody's hand like a like a pickle? I mean, ugh, it's ugh. so. <laughs> so I would look somebody in the eye and I would shake their hand firmly, and that was enough to be intimidating to some people. Can you imagine? So um, I tried to tone down my approach and just step back a little bit and allow them to come in. I think I spoke earlier, the first version about having the colors and uh, your appearance does not have to be highbrow. You don't. You can just be there, stand there. Don't be, you know, in torn jeans, although they are popular these days, those ripped jeans. My daughter wears them, but I don't think I'm going there. But anyway, um, I hope you got something out of this, and uh, I appreciate you listening, and um, I love you all, my flatter family. Thanks. Bye. Oops.